early exchange, shaping policy, advancing development. Hello, many thanks for making it a duty to be a part of Early Exchange this morning by tuning into our channel so you could be part of the policy shaping and advancing developments. It's no longer news that there is the de dollarization move of the BRICS nation in talking about Brazil, Russia, India, South Africa, and of course China. And uh, they've been moving to creates a payment system that doesn't use uh, the U.S. dollar. And there is another update to that that says 12 countries have abandoned the U.S. dollar and transact 85% of trade in local currencies. To look at that and uh, to see the possibility of the dream of the BRICS nation having trade without the U.S. Do dollar, Let's have Ambassador Williams Wallace, who is the Chairman, African Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Good morning, Ambassador Wallace. Good morning, my dear. How are you? I'm great. Does this feel like great Night. news for you that what was okay. once a theory, it seems some countries are moving straight ahead to have that happen? We spoke about it. I tell you and I said to you, it will become a reality. And it has become a reality uh, now, as you can see, leading into the next week or so, um, the nations, they are scrambling. Even one North American country has also decided to join the, uh, the BRICS nations, the BRICS system, and the BRICS uh, platform of exchange, uh, replacing SWIFT. So the de-dollarization process has started indeed and is gaining ground, um, very much so. Um, as you know, uh, when this hits, what's going to be affected would be, one, the uh, finance uh, system, the banks, and trade. Those are the three key things that are going to be uh, uh, giving you signs that the days of the dollar um, is coming, I wouldn't say to an end, but it's coming into another set of basket of currencies. So at the moment, um, if you notice that banks in the United States of America, thousands of branches are beginning to close and they're heading towards a digital dollar. And that is because of uh, the uh, BRICS impact on uh, de-dollarization. Now, for countries to be able to ditch the U.S. dollar and transact in local currencies, uh, one thing that was mentioned in our previous discussion is the volume of trade between any country or countries that choose to have their trade done with them in local currencies. Take, for instance, African countries. If Nigeria chooses to trade with maybe South Africa using local currencies, what's the possibility of that? Are there factors that will determine the success of trading with local currencies like these 12 countries have done? Well, if you read uh, uh, up on BRICS uh, thoroughly at the moment, that is exactly what they're doing. They're saying that they will be able to use their own local currencies in a unilateral and in a bilateral manner to trade. And that is because the uh, reserves of the dollar has impacted on trade especially on African countries whose currencies are extremely weak, right? <clears throat> now, as I gave an example before, and I'll give it again. For example, right now, <clears throat> China has allowed <clears throat> Nigeria to trade with their currency um, to buy goods. And what they do, they recycle that money back to Nigeria where we may need to give Ambassador Wallace some time to um, attend to himself and also there seems to be poor connection from his end. When that is resolved, we'll continue the conversation with him. But looking at countries that are able to trade within themselves, the one thing that a lot of economists have been saying about Africa is that there isn't much intra-trade within Africa. There's most times trade between one African country and countries outside of Africa, maybe China or some European country. 
if we look at what this trade is about sometimes, it's, it's, it's manufactured products. There isn't much of manufacturing of the things that Africans use within the country. And there's also um, this sort of um, mistrust for one another uh, as to sometimes the quality of the product. Even within Nigeria, that seems to be an issue locally manufactured goods and foreign produced goods. Now, when you place these two side by side, for some persons, even without checking the quality of these two different products, one locally made and the other foreign made, some people want to quickly go to the foreign made under the assumption that the, the foreign made good has more quality than the locally made good. There seems to be a transfer of that to other African countries or like maybe African countries can produce the machines or some of the goods as as uh, in a good quality as they would get from maybe China or some European countries. There are several factors to these issues and there are several benefits to trading amongst uh, Africans when, in, when inter-African trade is promoted. The de-dollarization move may be uh, pushed by the BRICS nation, but from what a lot of analysts have said, it will benefit many countries. For instance, if you check what the exchange rate of the, the, the U.S. dollar to the Naira is, it's quite high. So if there were more trade in Naira, that would not be the case. But I am not the analyst here today. Ambassador Williams Wallace is the analyst and I guess is back. Hello, Ambassador Wallace. Are you there? I've just got the tail end of what you said there um, in terms of the, uh, the trading aspect. I mean, what we have to do is to start the intertrade with the AFCTA and get our African nations with our own standards established for goods and services. The platform, the, the pass, right? The, uh, the, the, the systems that we already have in place and to get our own currency uh, on the table together with BRICS, you know, we have a basket of currencies then that gives us the opportunity to be in a free market economy. And there's no saying that you can't still utilize the dollar, but the pressure on the dollar on the local currencies will be removed when you have the ability to trade with your own currency within your own system and with the BRICS nations allowing you who occupy maybe 70% of the world trade um, to trade among yourselves and with them. That's a great advantage, and that is absolutely sorely needed by African countries. If you look at what the BRICS uh, nation or the BRICS bloc is doing, there is a de dollarization move, but look at the countries that have formed the BRICS. We have Russia, we have uh, Brazil, we have China, we have India, and of course, South Africa. And there have been other countries that have uh, signaled interest in wanting to be part of Including that Including Nigeria. But many of them are yet to be admitted. Now, the blockchain uh, payment system that is going to be launched by the BRICS nation, I recall that in our last conversation, I asked if uh, membership of the BRICS nation would in any way det determine those who could use the payment system or not. What do you think is going to be like? At that point, would there be like mass acceptance of more countries so that this payment system would be made possible? Or it doesn't matter. You could be from any part of the world. If you want to use it, you go ahead and do that. Right. Remember what I said, that they are going to test, do alpha testing, alpha beta testing of their digital uh, system. And of course, blockchain is one of the advantages now of a quantum leap away from fiat currency. So right now, um, it is a question of those countries who have already had a, a great leap forward in digital technology will be easily uh, able to join the BRICS system uh, based on blockchain. So therefore, um, as you say, anywhere in the world, if you've got uh, digital technology, as part of your policy of uh, government, and you have advanced it, I see no reason why they can't join BRICS quite quickly. I think they will be accepted quite quickly, but I'm sure BRICS will want to ensure that they have cybersecurity uh, in place, 
they will also probably put some of that cybersecurity in place for the nations that are joining. And I think the, the more the merrier because it strengthens that new system um, for trade. <clears throat> and that's the main reason of the BRIC systems coming uh, together. It is the trade, the ability to trade and not rely on the US dollar as the sole currency of exchange and the SWIFT system. Uh, the SWIFT system is going to be, uh, I wouldn't say a thing of the past, but the SWIFT system is going to be a system that is among a basket of other uh, currencies. And they will no longer be able to use SWIFT as a monetary weapon. You know, uh, the US dollar is a weapon. It keeps people in line and tells you who to do business with. No longer that. And Russia wanted to move away from that. China wanted to move away from that. India wanted to move away from that. Because there are billions in numbers. India, a billion people. China, Russia, you know, two, three billion. Think about the, 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 the effect of such a large population having to trade among themselves and had to go through the SWIFT system in the United States. It didn't make sense. And it was used as a weapon, especially for oil trade. So now we have got an opportunity to have an alternative. And, you know, it is now ramping up in the next two weeks when they have the conference, they will announce who is part of their BRICS, uh, what system is being used, how people can enter. And I'm quite sure a lot who are sitting on the fence right now, as you say, waiting to get in, will jump on board because everybody wants to be able to trade and use the currency that they have uh, in their country. Although Africa needs to have one currency and we are working on that. That African wanting to have a common currency, that's been a long time, yeah. The expectation has been built up for so long. But this is BRICS that within uh, a couple, few years have been able to achieve this. What does the BRICS uh, block have that the African continent seems to be lacking? Five countries put together, pushing for a move, and then they're making good success in that area. And then you have 54 huh? countries needing something, wanting something, but it's not at the it, level it that you have down, for the BRICS comes, payment system. Yeah. What seems right. to be wrong? It comes, yeah, it comes down to three things, my dear. One, leadership. People who want to lead on the continent, they are not uh, agreeing, right? Two, the impact of the colonial powers. France, for example, uh, with CFA controlling the uh, French colonies still till today uh, until Mali, Niger uh, kicked them out and Burkina Faso. Uh, the fact that these uh, people control the currencies of those countries is another factor. And third, the uh, weaponization of the dollar against African countries trying to do that. This is what they did to uh, Gaddafi. This is what they did to Captain uh, Sankara. Sankara. So you have those three factors moving against the continent, setting up a standard currency. We needed to have a standard central bank, right? And everybody needed to collapse all their currencies into one currency for trade amongst the world. And because it's 55 countries and those other factors that I talked about, the influence of France and other colonial powers controlling the monetary system, the CIFA. What is the CIFA? It's nonsense. It's just paper. They are taking the gold from uh, French Africa and building up their currencies, and you have to borrow from their central bank your own money. Then you have the Western powers who say, we do not want them to have their own strong currency. They will continue to use the dollar as a weapon and influence those leaders. They have so many, uh, uh, what I will call, um, uh, notes on these people. They know what they do. They know where they've stolen their money. They know where they've put their money. So those people who have been doing that to the detriment of the uh, continent, these are the people who have kept uh, Africa from having one currency. Because 54 countries meant that you have 52, 54 opportunities to uh, uh, um, poison, I would have to say, the leadership, 
in so many ways, threaten them in so many ways. And because they are not concerted in their effort, the African Union is supposed to be doing that. And that is why we, knew, we need new leadership on the African Union and in the African Union to get around to the plans that the African Union had set. That was one of those plans, having a single currency. So we need to have proper leadership. We need to ditch those uh, colonial uh, overtures on uh, currency, like the CIFA. When they tried to do the ECHO in West Africa, what happened? France torpedoed it because they realized that one part of Africa was going to have a standard currency, which included their colonies, and they didn't want it. When Gaddafi tried to set up a one currency based on the gold reserves that he had, not even Africa, what he had, you know, they killed him, right? Those are all facts. Uh, and, and now the AU has to be the one to lead the way. Why should individual countries be signing contracts with the other parts of the world, like the European Union, you use the African Union to set up those contracts to protect the interests of the African countries because all their currencies are weak. How many countries we have? 54. How many of them have uh, uh, currencies? Almost uh, 40 or, or more. And they are all weak and they continue to be weakened every day. And that is purposeful. That is planned. You know, so long may live the BRIC system and a standard uh, uh, digital currency for Africa. We have got the opportunity now to take a quantum leap because we are in the digital era and it can be done. So if we have the leadership in the financial sector decide that they want to do it, um, they don't have to wait uh, for anyone to tell them what to do and how to do it. We just need leadership and it's happening already in uh, West Africa, especially uh, countries that have uh, ditched France, they have gone about to set up their own united standard uh, currency. Well, with trade happening with local countries ha having trade in their countries having trade in the local currencies, does it stop there? As the US dollar is still the world's reserve currencies. Now, we've seen that uh, in recent times, some countries have shifted to gold, but how many countries can afford to do that? Almost all of Africa can do that because uh, gold is uh, prominent. They're just not telling. Do you know that Nigeria has more gold than South Africa, for example? Right? A lot of our African countries, but it's been done illegally and illegal mining, uh, etc. But you talk about the United States and uh, they are the reserve currency. It is not owned by the government of the United States, as you know. It is owned by a uh, private sector. So uh, the, 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 the driving force of the United States economy is not owned by the government. It's the Rockefellers and the others who own the, uh, the, the fiat currency that you see they pull out of the air and say, uh, this is the, the value. Where is the reserve uh, in terms of gold um, from the United States government? It's not, you know. Um, Therefore, we have on the ground the resources, gold, diamond, uh, and all the other resources, mineral resources, which can support a united and standard currency in Africa. And it's only the willingness now of the leaders to come together and say, let's put all of our resources at a value and set up a standard for our own currency. It can be done. It's about leadership now. Really and truly, it's about leadership. Now, while talking about mining, uh, a story is trending that Kenya is seeking investors to curb China's dominance in its mining industry. Look at uh, Africa, blessed with natural resources. There are many minerals that can be tapped from Africa, but there doesn't seem to be much local investment in the mining sector in Africa. What is wrong? Again, I ask. Yeah, what is wrong is that we don't have a policy of protecting our natural resources. What stops, uh, do you know that uh, China is now the manufacturing base of the world or has, has been for the past few years? What stops every country on the continent 
but saying where our mineral resources are. We set up a factory that belongs to the people and you partner with an investor coming with his skills and his machinery. And you transfer those skills locally. What is wrong with building some of those machinery that is needed as part of your partnership with any of the world uh, equipment manufacturers? What is wrong with doing that? No, what we do, we put out our begging hands and begging bowls, you know, please come, come and do our resources. A few people uh, in the government get some kickback and they are utilizing the resources of that country and that community. Those communities should set up factories as part of government policy. Nkrumah uh, had started it, right? Nkrumah had started it in Ghana. Uh, Ado Kufo Ado uh, had said he was going to set a factory up in every community. I don't know how far he's gone with that, but that is the kind of template that Africa needs. Where our raw material resources are, it should be a partnership, one with the government and two with the local community. What is wrong with uh, saying to an investor, you're coming to invest, we want you to make returns on your investment. Yes, but you're going to transfer knowledge. You are going to bring your equipment and train. So you'll train, transfer skills, and also we'll help you and demonstrate to you how to manufacture the equipment, support it, and maintain it. What is wrong with that as part of government policy? It is a strategic policy that has to be developed by a particular country. Any of the African countries that have that as standard. As a matter of fact, it should be the African Union dictating that and saying, if you're coming to do business in Africa, this is our standard. We want transfer of knowledge. We want a transfer of skills. We want the ability to manufacture the same equipment to do what we want for our resources to be developed. And we want to be able to maintain it. So that's part of the partnership agreement that uh, we need. And that is part of what we are doing at the African International Chamber, where I'm chairman, is that we are saying to people who are being invited to come to invest, this is the chamber's policy, that we want you to be partnering with any of the countries you want to come to and you need to invest in. We need to see that you're going to develop local content, transfer skill, uh, uh, tra do training, and also help in manufacturing uh, the very same equipment and maintaining and supporting it. And that is part of our vision as a chamber. So we are parallel to government. We are putting that in place. As I'm driving the process of the chamber, that's what I've said. So anybody that's coming in and want to partner with the chamber to get into countries, we're saying this is our philosophy. The African Union can do the very same. Many thanks, Ambassador Williams Wallace, for taking our time to be part of the show today. I understand you've got a very busy schedule, so we're going to let you go thanks. so you can attend to other matters right now. Yes, thank you very much. But look forward to continuing this when uh, we have the BRICS takeoff in two weeks' time. Please uh, have a look out and uh, let's have a chat again on it at that point in time. I think it will be extremely hot news. And as you see, you all have been predicting with uh, myself that it is going to happen and it is already happening. All right. Well, that's a developing matter. We will be sure to bring updates and uh, expand the conversation as events unfold regarding that. Thank you very much. Early exchange, shaping policy, advancing development.